I was looking at this. I was screenshotting. I told you I, I take notes, and I, I'm just floored because Black Rue and Maximus have been really talking about this. The other day, Maximus was talking about the single ledger. Black Rue's been talking about it's connected. But let's just read the first three bullets. This is so amazing. A single financial market infrastructure, FF, FMI, leveraging shared ledger technology capable of settling multi-asset transactions. Now, if you jump down to why they should do it, um, it says in the second block, having both tokenized central bank money and commercial bank money within this RSM, the financial market infrastructure will allow for FMM, FMI to maintain the existing two-tier banking system, and, and you can take it down now, uh, Maximus. Um, this right here speaks volumes to me, um, just volumes. Look, uh, Black Bro, I'm going to say this one thing because I'm literally just sitting here. I, I might not go to sleep tonight. <laughs> I might not go to sleep tonight. Literally, I don't know how. I mean, it's almost like you two are oracles I mean, <laughs> because this is one thing that no matter what we believe the big money the banking institutions we're not, we got to think big international worldwide they want to maintain the status quo and it says these banks maximus got this video these banks says don't share it because we're not supposed to see this maximus i hope i don't get if i don't make it y'all know what happened because it says right there to maintain the existing two-tier banking system. See, this, what we've been talking about, is getting out of control for the bigger, higher-ups. Old money, Rockefellers, and these other old names. They love the old system. They control the old system. They realize this di these multiple digital revenues from in different areas is out of their control. So this is a power move. This is huge. That's all I want to say. This I don't know if y'all saw this, but y'all got to pay attention to this. That's it, Maximus. Thank you, Black Room. No problem. I mean, uh, that's where it's at for me. You know, back to the whole thing I was talking about earlier. To anybody who's tuned in, Bitcoin, peer-to-peer -peer cash system, literally written in the white paper. Then you see this for a peer-to-peer -peer financial system. Hmm. Look at the tokenomics about QNT. 14.88 million tokens. Okay. That's the max. BTC, about 21 million, give or take. So it's like more scarce. <laughs> Interoperability for 100 plus blockchains. And if your project isn't on the list, let them know. And what will they do? They'll figure something out for it. Wow. You know, API, everything. I mean, come on. There's more to it than just this. I want to get into a little bit more about this. So we showed you guys that. How would you like us to get into some of the nitty gritty with actual screenshots? Now, I've showed a little bit about this in the past. And again, I think this is taken from Quant Papa's computer screen. So it's not a perfect screenshot. But nonetheless, I want you guys to see this. Everybody asks, how things work on the back end how does it look literally like like if you were connected to the overledger or, or who writes it and you know what's it connected you know to you know back in gamer land for me you know i'm playing like one of my favorite old first person shooters like metal Honor, ally of the solar the first call of duties screenshots are didn't happen well look at this guys it definitely did happen and the point is when we full screen this a little bit more, it's understanding like the plumbing, understanding the connections. So you have over here a solution overview, the core RLN regulated liability network infrastructure, third party integrations, business applications to RLN API. People have asked before, well, we don't know if it's quant. Okay, well, <laughs> it shows a pretty compelling case you know, and you also heard some of these interviews, whether it's from GV or some of the other financial participants in that panel that wasn't even supposed to be released to the media. But you have 
these messaging services. You have, for example, like we point out before in other deep dives, common RLN orchestration, programmability later, state management programmability. Again, quant is there, workflow orchestration. And look at this. You know, we'll show some other screenshots in a bit. A shared ledger. You have R3. R3, digital currencies apps. You know, who's going to host some of this stuff? Well, who's going to be the API gateway? It is the overledger. Okay, what about for wrapped, or I should say wrapped, I gotta stop saying it, wholesale CBDC partition. Boom, you have that. So obviously BIS, obviously Bank of England, um, other ones, right? Banque de France, you name it. Lately, uh, what was the Central Bank of Italy, which obviously that would be your R3 connection. How about API gateways? Or, um, you know, for example, retail CBDC partition, boom, that's there. How about, for example, some of the other TD partitions, you know, member banks, all that stuff. But on the right side, open banking APIs, you know, we talked about, for example, you know, Project Embridge, and we talked about, you know, Project Rosalind. Look at this. Rosalind, we've already been there and done that. Bank of England, Rosalind Sandbox, Quant. You also have this other thing, DXC, you know? So, Later on, I don't have it tonight, but I'm going to give you guys a taste of DXC. Your key takeaway for DXC is who is the person originally behind that? And the answer, and I'm going to just give you a little taste, is a guy who basically taught Gilbert Verdi and a lot of what he knows. So there's that connection. And apparently that particular individual passed away a few years ago. It's a sad situation, but he mentored Gilbert Verdian. So I'm not going to give everything away on one day, but that's big. So, you know, imagine having somebody that mentored you part of this mix. All right, let's jump into the next part. This is also good. <clears throat> Here's another screenshot. Regulated liability network, platform for innovation. RLN in itself is what? It's a concept for a new type of regulated financial market. Infrastructure, FMI, back to a little bit what of you know um, Underdog was talking about earlier with those screenshots that would operate a shared ledger that records, transfers, and settles regulated liabilities of central banks, commercial banks, and even regulated non-banks. The concept in itself could enable the use of tokenized deposits, programmable payments, and other new functionality. If you guys were watching the video of that uh, panel that was not supposed to, again, be released to the media, they pounded all that home. This just kind of just shows you a screenshot format just in case you missed it. And it's all there, but RLN shared ledger. We already know the quant connection. So I thought I'd get into that. And the other part I want to get into is bottom left, UK finance. You have EY, R3, and quant. Just a few more things. I won't try to take too much time. How about this? Another screenshot. The evolution of money. Okay. You have, for example, a push to pull programmable payments, simple lock. Issuer locks funds can also unlock them, allowing consumers to earmark or hold money. This was mentioned on that panel. What about a two party lock? Issuer locks funds pre authorizes a second scheme member, issuer acquire to debit a particular amount. Guys, come on. Do we forget about Quant Authorized? This is why Quant Authorized. They put so much emphasis on that particular utility for the product of overledger. How about this third one? Three-party lock. Funds are locked by an issuer and pre-authorized in favor of a beneficiary. So, boom. Two-party lock is utility emotion. Three-party lock is even more utility emotion. So, guys, remember how we mentioned the institutions are required to hold QNT? What about us in retail that hold QNT? <laughs> I mean... All right, so there's that. Um, how about this? You know, funds being paid conditioned by the authorization of a third party and HTL, excuse me, HTLC lock, primarily used for synchronization with another payment system. Back to the whole thing of, well, we got the problem of real-time growth settlements. Uh, you can't use QNT, so here's your 20 token. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's blockchain agnostic, and you can switch to XRPL for real-time growth settlements trade with xdc you name it more things about this you know in here i mean it's, this is a lot of the whole nerd talk but it's all here you know and it's interesting to see these screenshots 
All right. A little bit more about orchestration tokenized deposits. Now, we gave you a blast from the past. Let's take you to the present. This was posted not that long ago from the Quant Network. Quant on CBDCs and tokenized deposits, June 18th, 2024. Now, you could you know, go to the Quant Network site. You can see it for yourself unless they took it down. <clears throat> but don't miss our CEO, Gilbert Verdian, live on stage discussing our recent involvement in the UK's regulated liability network with senior representatives from City. Remember how long I had to take criticism, and it's okay. I'm, I'm a coachable guy. I had so many people in the comments saying, City's not there. Uh, you're making this stuff up. Well, that aged well, didn't it? I think it did. Deutsche Bank. HSBC, and of course, Nexi Group. We know Nexi Group has huge ties on the APIN to Quant. So that's posted, okay? I'm just pointing some things out that age really well. How about this other thing? Common platform for all assets to settle with what? Digital money. Again, from the video. Do we have any more? Yes, we do. Look at this. Javier Perez, Tasso Theory, some of these other people. Tony McLaughlin, there's your city connection. And what do we have on the pound sign? I'm not going to call it hashtag. I'm old school. RSN. Look at that, guys. Ain't that beautiful how it all comes together? RLN. Innovation. Tokenization. Shared leisure. Unified leisure. And even Swift. As in old school Swift. Not Swift blockchain. Okay? Because that's S-W-I-F-T. I always got to throw that out there because I know some of you guys get kind of confused with that. So Simfa manages POC. And we talked about this uh, last was it week or two. Deep dive tokenized assets on a common system jeez i mean quants all connected to all this and then some yeah all that and then some all right what about private meetings where are we taking some of this stuff well some person sent me a dm um in regards to the guy on the far left they're saying that was jack dorsey i don't know for sure but he sure does look like jack dorsey but it is what it is but what is this private private meeting well Look in the background here. RLN? Well, what the heck is going on with this? Check this out for a second. We zoom in more. Is this lady. Who is this lady? Well, I'm going to get into that. Her name is Phoebe Zhu. She's the head of emerging payments in Europe. She's the chairman, or chair lady, I should say, HSBC China Connect. Uh-huh. You know, one of the things, I know, I see Rue here, and I'm going to have you chime in here a bit, and I think, <laughs> underdog i'm looking at you guys reactions i might have you guys chime in here in a bit but guys i'm telling you flat out action reaction right so you even have you know phoebe zoo hsbc china connect excited to have participating in the rln uk innovators workshop today so that's what that event was it was a fantastic gathering of over 150 innovators and fintechs both online and in person coming to together to explore the potential of regulated liability network experimentation she had the opportunity to lead one of the world's or excuse me one of the work stream to delve into a business benefits and various use cases the room was buzzing with energy yeah kind of like we're buzzing right now i see you guys don't make much comments why are you doing that probably because you're soaking in the knowledge awesome but look at this the exchange of ideas, knowledge was incredible. It was truly a delight to witness those light bulb moments. Yeah, is the light bulb been turned on for you guys tonight? I saw you, OG Crypto, in the comments. Your your mind is blown, right? But guys, immensely grateful, she says, for the dedicated efforts and collaboration of this community. Well, same with us, with our community. RLM embraces a culture of continuous learning and sharing. Keep up the great work. And again, Tony McLaughlin from City cited here. Some of these other people, again, they all meant for this? I would love to see what's on that projector back there. But that was crucial. And again, we'll, we'll take a pause here in a bit because I definitely want to hear from our panel that we have here today. EBA Day, and we talked about this in Lisbon. Look at this for a second, guys. Agenda, speakers, sponsors, challenges and benefits of CBDCs, tokenized deposits, and, of course, stablecoin adoption. Now, I'm going to really pound that home. I have an exclusive interview that... You know, I think also flew on the radar. I didn't see anybody talking about it. You know, I'm not trying to be like one of those guys, but like, oh, you're only going to get for me. You know, no, it's okay. But it's a key player from Circle. So before we get into that, I want you guys to see this. Tokenized money is on the horizon in numerous countries. What are the benefits and risk of programmability? How likely is the risk of managed, or excuse me, market fragmentation through multiple offerings, both private 
and public chasing after the same use cases. And of course, you see Gilbert Verdi in there, but you see some other key players there, and of course, there is Phoebe's Zhu. All right, before we kick it into the video, which will also blow your mind away when you hear that, it's a nine-minute video, we're going to take a pause, and we're going to hear from our panel that we have here tonight. So who wants to take it based off of what you just saw, even with that? Oh, I'm researching right in real time. I'm over here. I'm over here looking hard. I mean, <laughs> Max, but you can't expect us to get all this. You, uh, This is awesome. I need you to do me a favor, though, and sure. I'll let Black Fruit talk. You know, I'm a forensic scientist, so if you will pull back up that uh, sh uh, the thing you said, I wish I could see it, uh, you bring that clip back up so I can sure. take a screenshot of that. Um, I'll see if I can clarify and get that to you. All right, let me see here. But if something happens to me, Rude, tell my tell my family I loved them. I loved them. But Max was he, he set us up, Rude. Max was <laughs> set us up. Oh man, that's funny. All right, so it's a uh, top right. All right, I and see. I look it. on the left. It's hard to see that. Give me just no. It's okay. That's that's what forensic tools are for. I have it now. Thank you very much. Well, that's I, awesome. I, that's cool. All right. Um, so right. that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, go ahead and uh, stop my mic, and I'm going to start working on this while you're talking to Rue, and this is great. Thank you, Maxwell. No, no problem. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. So, Rue, yeah, um, I'm not trying to put you – I mean, I saw some of your reactions when I mentioned the whole thing of Phoebe Zhu, you know, HSBC, the China Connect. Well, it continues to be, yeah, the China is, like, connected some way there. And um, HSBC continues to come up as well. Um, we were just talking about them earlier with um, the C CFTC and Stellar. Um, so, you know, <laughs> connections continue to be made here. So you guys, if you follow, for example, Tokenizer, he covers SATP quite often, you know, Secure Asset Transfer Protocol. If you know about Quant, this is something that you – should know about for the most part over the course of two three years you've at least heard this topic get brought up every so often what about secure asset transfer protocol and the oh yeah the topic of the night the regulated liability network huh this guy does an excellent job of giving you a heads up of how this really comes together from a different perspective it's not that long of a video but man if you this some of this stuff, you're like, man, I don't really get this. It's okay, no problem. You know, we all are at different areas when it comes to learning. But I think for people that are just coming into quant, this is going to help you understand it. There's an introduction. There's a the whole thing of RL1 breakdown. I'm going to talk about the protocol, and he's even bringing SATP because again, SATP and quant have an RLN like you guys seen today in the outline quant. So. Yeah, let's talk about this. This is SETL CEO Anthony Culligan, if you wonder who he is, and he's going to discuss this. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Smash that like. Thanks for being here. Here we go. Today I'm going to talk to you about how the regulated liability network could interact with the Secure Asset Transfer Protocol, or SATP. SATP is an IETF initiative to establish interoperability between disparate ledgers or states. I will start with an overview of how Settle designed and built the RLN. The RLN is an orchestrator or transaction manager that coordinates a number of ledger updates to achieve an atomic transaction of some kind. Here we show how Alice at City can transfer US dollars to Bob at Wells Fargo on the RLN. It involves changing three ledgers, cities, Wells Fargo's, and the Federal Reserve ledger. For the purpose of this transaction, we assume that those ledgers are private and use different technologies. The ledger updates we need to implement are a burn at city, a mint at Wells Fargo, and a transfer at the Federal Reserve. The first step is that transaction is proposed to the RLM. Second, that proposal is distributed to all participants. Third, the participants, after doing their sanctions and fraud checks, 
agree to the transaction. Fourth, when the RLN has accumulated all of the agreements, it sends a finality message to the participants. And finally, each participant updates their private ledger. The purpose of the RLN in this example is to orchestrate the transaction and to communicate with the various ledger owners. The detail is in what is in those messages to give the participants the confidence to act together to achieve a transaction. Now, a working assumption is that there will be more than one RLN. For example, there could be one in the UK and one in the US. For the RLN to be a useful model and not just a collection of silos, there needs to be a way of a transaction spanning different RLNs. And this is where the gateway comes in. To take it a step further, there could be many RLNs, each using different technologies. At Settle, we call these settlement domains. In this model, there's a need for a general protocol which provides for settlement between ledgers that exist in different domains. For this, Settle has published a protocol. You can see that at rln-ip.org. The key principles of that protocol are as follows. A domain is a collection of ledgers. This could be an individual bank or a collection of organizations by jurisdiction or purpose, such as members of a central clearing organization or depository. The tech behind the domain is opaque to the gateway. It should work with any kind of network of ledgers. Gateways themselves decide who they trust. This is important as we did not want any global central organization to intermediate between settlement domains. This would be technically and organizationally cumbersome. Gateways make a point-to-point -point connection. That is, there is no global network that needs to support the model. And gateways relay messages on behalf of ledgers, a ledger being a collection of entries that is controlled by some identifiable entity or person. The purpose of the gateway is to relay those messages. Insofar as ledgers in other domains need to rely upon those messages, they should be from identifiable sources and cryptographically signed. This implies a common PKI for all parties in a transaction, but not necessarily a global PKI. Finally, we did not seek to impose a transport layer on gateway connections. We considered that to be part of the settlement domains agreements between each other. In internet terms, that is further down the stack. Our core aim here is to establish a protocol which software developers can use to code. To be frank, the more products that use a common protocol, the more valuable each product is, including our own. With this in mind, we took a look at uh, the Secure Asset Transfer Protocol. As we could see that on the face of it, it has very similar aims to ours. What we found is very encouraging. It is a smart group of contributors who recognize the same needs as we do. Having said that, it's not a perfect match. And here I'll identify three key differences between SATP's current state and what we think is needed. I must stress that SATP is a live project and will evolve over time, so nothing is set in stone. First, SATP is focused on an interaction that operates only between two gateways. RLN transactions can take place between many ledgers in many gateways. However, we think we can work with this by collecting many SATP interactions into one atomic packet. Second, 
The current draft of SATP strictly limits the interaction to a mint in one network coupled with a burn in another. This is only one of the myriad paradigms that are needed for a fully functional gateway on the RLN. Even amongst one-way transfers, this does not cover many of the different ways of achieving a transfer, like wrapping, for example. Third, and perhaps most surprising to us, SATP requires that gateways hold assets in escrow as part of a transfer between two networks. This is antithetical to our idea of a gateway being a postbox for messages and there being a strict demarcation between actors on each network and the gateway function, which should not act as principal in any transaction. We're trying to encourage the group of contributors to drop this as a mandatory feature. Overall, we are really very encouraged by SATP. We are happy to contribute to it as a standard. To sum up, we do not think that there will ever be a single ledger that records everything. We consider any change of ownership of anything to be a collection of ledger updates. Networks of ledgers already exist, and we expect more to emerge by jurisdiction or by some other common purpose, such as clearing houses. We think, we think a standardized gateway between networks is the way to achieve interoperability. And finally, SATP has the potential to be that connector, but it does require us all to pitch in and make it workable. Two key things I want everybody to remember from this takeaway of that video. He mentions orchestration and he mentions a gateway connector platform. That's all you really need to know for the current time moment. Watch this. Let's take you over to here and it's this next particular screenshot. In reality, it's the same screenshot from before, but sometimes you just need some things to be circled. So orchestration, well, common RLN orchestration and programmability layer. Do we have quant? Yes, we do have quant. Boom, quant, right side. All right, workflow orchestration, including the overall ledger. All right, well, what about the platform? Remember I talked about in, you know, a, a gateway platform connector? Well, boom, countless examples in regards to that. Or, like I mentioned before, your wholesale CBDCs, your retail CBDCs, and even on the right side, you have open banking APIs. So there's your gateway. What about Roslyn? Again, we, we already talked about that numerous times. Other content creators have covered that. And then on top of that, API gateway, even with DXC. And again, in the future, we'll get more into why that's important. So it's all there. It's all being orchestrated. And of course, bottom of your screen, EY, R3, and Quant, UK Finance, right? UK Finance. If managing your crypto feels like solving a puzzle, it's time to switch to Decent Wallet. Say goodbye to complicated setups and hello to Decent Wallet, the hassle-free solution to your digital currency needs. With just a few taps, you can manage, track, and secure your crypto with unmatched ease. And here's the best part. Grab your Decent Wallet at a discounted price by using the referral link below. Don't miss out on making your crypto experience smoother and more secure.